Hello readers, I'm Amy and hopefully this is going to be the last sexual assault book recommendations video that I do. I'm going to try and cut through the rest of these really fast because I want to try and get this done in under an hour. This video is all about the fiction recommendations that I received from people on Twitter, except for this very first book that I'm going to mention, which I forgot to mention in earlier videos because I think you guys know me at this point, I'm just a very, very forgetful person. Someone asked me on Twitter if I had read The Color Purple, and yes, yes I have. But did it make it onto my books about sexual assault that I have read list? No. No it didn't. Because I didn't peruse my physical shelves before doing that video. I looked at my Goodreads shelves and apparently didn't go far enough and didn't see that. The Color Purple is a classic. It talks about race, it talks about sexual assault, it talks about sexuality and sexual identity, and it's amazing and you should go read it, and it's probably like a 6 or a 7 on the difficult to read scale, where 10 is very difficult and 1 is very easy. Glad I got that out of the way! Anyways, hi! Sexual assault book recommendations, talking about Twitter recommendations today in my series of videos on sexual assault and how important it is and how we need to talk about it. So let's get started because I have so many books to try and finish up this project. So Anatomy of a Scandal is the first book on my list which is in no particular order. These are all fiction books. This one takes place among Britain's privileged elite where Sophie's husband James is a loving father, a handsome man, a charismatic and successful public figure, and yet he stands accused of a terrible crime. I think we can assume that that terrible crime is sexual assault, which we also know don't take people at face value. Just because they look good doesn't mean that they haven't done something absolutely horrendous. It's about finding out people's opinions on this person, who's right, who's wrong. Um, it looks like there may be some discussion of privilege which would be really great, and there's some sort of mystery about Oxford. Looks interesting. Would read. Also is on my list, so I'm probably gonna read it eventually, because that's kind of how this list works. Next up, Sadie. I have been eyeing this book for some time, and I have not read it yet. Intrigued by the cover. Apparently it is set up as some sort of podcast. The main character is a radio personality. No, it involves a radio personality. Okay. <clears throat> a missing girl on a journey of revenge, a serial-like podcast following the clues she's left behind. So it is like a podcast. I hear the audiobook is really great because it sounds like a podcast and that interests me. Um, not that I really listen to podcasts at all. I have one podcast that I listen to that you should totally go listen to because it's amazing. Pop up right here. Apparently it's local too. The people, I don't know if they're living in Montana right now, but at least one of them is from Montana and that's great because Montana just doesn't have a lot going on, you know? Anyways, this book sounds like a podcast, so I really should read it one of these days. It is a kind of murder mystery and someone says it involves sexual assault, so that's great. This was apparently Courtney Summers' breakout book, according to Goodreads. Next up is You Must Not Miss. This is about a girl whose family is self-destructed the night of a party. Now our main character is called a slut whenever she walks the hallways of her school. This is a sexual assault trope, book trope, and really a movie trope that we see time and time again, where if someone engages with someone else sexually, whether or not it was consensual, that person is known as a slut. There are so many problems around that language. I hope this book explores that because that would be really interesting. Um, apparently explores a group of misfits who have all been socially exiled, like our main character has, and she's kind of lost in her notebook, in her writing, so we have a great coping skill added in there. It looks interesting. Um, she imagines this world to be so completely, she imagines it so completely, so fully that she writes it into existence right in her own backyard. I'm interested. Using writing as a coping skill and kind of bringing your imagination to life. Like that? I'm intrigued. I want to read this book. Then we have Deer Skin by Robin McKinley. This was recommended to me by Backlist Books. 
I think is the name of their channel. This is a duo who records um, a booktube channel and they got a hold of me personally on my messages and they're like, really, really want you to read this book. Could you do that, please? And so I have pushed it way up on my list. It is going to be the next book that I pick up after this video. I should be picking it up sometime this week. Um, and this, from what I've seen, is kind of like a fantasy sexual assault. Not, not like a sexual assault fantasy, but like a fantasy-esque book that includes sexual assault. So if you like your fantasy and you want to explore some sexual assault narratives, Robin McKinley is probably the place to look. I have tried one of her books before, Sunshine. It was her vampire book, and I liked the beginning of it, and I hated the middle of it, and I never finished, so I'm hoping that Deerskin turns out better for me. I liked her writing well enough in Sunshine, so I have hopes that this will turn out better. This looks like it's going to be more incest-based, which isn't something I read a ton of. I have, well, I have seen it a lot in V.C. Andrews. I was a huge V.C. Andrews fan growing up. Only her originals, not her ghost written books. And it's, it's been a while since I've read an incest based novel and that's what this looks like. So this book, if you want to try it, would probably be more on the 10 side where like, not that any sexual assault is easy to read, but incest is definitely one of those topics that is much more difficult than others, I find. Then we have Blood Water Paint, which I told the person who recommended this, that title though, like Blood Water Paint. That is such a fascinating title. And the book cover is super colorful, which I'm very into. This is based on a true story of a painter, Artemisia, Gentileschi? Probably butchered that. Um, she gets to choose either life as a nun in a convent or a life grinding pigment for her father's paint. Um, being rather artistic myself, I'm very interested in this story. This is probably also higher on my list than some of the other books here. Uh, this is taking place in Rome in 1610. Men take what they want from women. And Artemisia is raped and she has to choose a life of silence or a life of truth no matter the cost. So I'm interested. I want to pick that up soon. And again, that title, Blood, Water, Paint. I just, ooh, something about that title gets me. Then we have Thorn. This looks like it's part of a series. Um, I believe this was also when I first looked at it, maybe some kind of, kind of fantasy. It includes princes and princesses. For Princess Alira, choice is a luxury she's never had until she's betrayed. So betrayal leads to a choice. She has a cruel family, contempt of the court, um, forced into marriage is not something I read a ton of, but I also just don't read a ton of marriage romance novels in general. Um, yeah, so it has to do with princes and princesses. It's a young adult looks like. I'm not sure how many of these are young adult. I believe Deerskin was also kind of a young adult. Um, but this one's definitely young adult. So maybe not so high on my list because I don't read a ton of young adult on my channel, but I have been known to fall in love with one or two. Next is Rust and Stardust, which this cover is like really eye-catching. Just that big red swipe across the the cover is really eye-catching. This is about 11-year-old Sally Horner who is being watched by 52-year-old Frank LaSalle, fresh out of prison, um, convinces Sally he's an FBI agent who can have her arrested in a minute unless she does as he says and looks like he mentally and physically assaults her for the next two years. So it looks like it's kind of along the lines of kidnapping, um, which is interesting. I'm intrigued. Then we have Black Girl Unlimited. Again, I don't see a ton of books combining race with sexual assault. So glad to see that. I think there needs to be more of that. I want to say 
urban fantasy. Echo Brown is a wizard from the east side where apartments are small and parents suffer addiction to the white rocks. So I'm, I want to say that means cocaine. I don't know. My, my knowledge of drug nicknames is so low. I, I wasn't that person. I don't understand any of the nicknames. I'm guessing cocaine. It could also be meth. And anyways, it's talking about magic and stuff, so it, it's looking like an urban fantasy, which is not a genre I have really explored much of at all. Uh, this also looks like it could be a young adult. It's also heavily autobiographical and infused with magical realism. Interesting. Intersections of poverty, sexual violence, depression, racism, and sexism, all to the arc of a transcendent coming of age. I like all of that combining of issues. Again, I want to see more books discussing race with sexual assault because I don't see it discussed often enough. Then Pretending by Holly Bourne. Holly Bourne is a booktube darling, at least in the circles that I go through. I know a couple of people, you know who you are, who have read like every single or almost every single Holly Bourne book. I keep thinking Holly Bourne's not gonna quite be my type because I think she does more young adult books from what I understand, but they talk about her so much that I'm like, I should really just read a Holly Bourne book already. And Pretending is about April. She is kind, pretty, and relatively normal, yet she can't seem to get past date five. So commitment issues. A lot of the sexual assault books that I have been reading are more based around younger main characters who aren't quite in that regularly dating adult stage yet. So seeing commitment issues in a book is something that I have not come across a lot. So I could very easily end up picking this up soon. Um, hmm. She wants to be more like Gretel, which the premise doesn't really say who Gretel is, but it says Gretel is exactly what men want. She's a regular, everyday, manic pixie dream girl next door with no problems. The problem is Gretel isn't real, and April is now claiming to be her. Interesting. Oof, I want to pick that up now. Okay, now we have probably the number one recommended book by Twitter, and that is Girl Made of Stars. Another young adult. This one is about twins. One twin's friend accuses the other twin of rape, and twin number one doesn't know what to think of everything. So she's torn between the family she loves and her own sense of right and wrong. She feels lost. I love twin narratives. Uh, my favorite or one of my favorite young adult books was I'll Give You the Sun, which is about a pair of twins. I love the swapping between one twin and the other. Um, I just, twins make really interesting stories. Identical, which I talked about in my first video by Ellen Hopkins. That was a book about twins and loved it. I, twin stories, you, I would think that twins wouldn't make that good of a story because a lot of the twin narratives like in movies and stuff are really just, they follow their tropes. But twins in books have just always thrown me. Like, they're always so good. Why can't movie twins be as interesting as book twins? Next up, this was not actually a Twitter recommendation. This is one I added myself when I realized that I have the book and I've had it for like a year or two sitting on my shelf and I haven't read it yet. That is The Roundhouse by Louise Erdrich. I've read one book of hers previously. Future Home of the Living God. That is a women's dystopia that really talks more about like immigration narratives, kind of. Um, I wasn't in love with the writing and the story, but I was interested enough that I wanted to give her another chance. The Roundhouse is one of her more well-known books. Louise Erdrich is Native American. This is a story about a boy on the cusp of manhood who seeks justice and understanding in the wake of a terrible crime that upends and forever transforms his family. So I'm guessing we're seeing sexual assault from the perspective of a boy who is not directly involved. Um, obviously I'm interested because it's sitting up on my to-be-read fiction side. 
I don't see a lot of male perspectives in sexual assault unless they're the perpetrator. Um, if they're the victim, if they're someone who's watching, it's just not a perspective that I see. Um, for obvious reasons, of course, but still, it's cool to switch things up. The Nowhere Girls, I was seeing this quite a few places on booktube um, around the time that I started. I haven't really seen it lately, but it looks like it follows three girls who are trying to avenge the rape of a classmate. Um, I remember hearing really mixed things on this book, but it has a 4.34 on Goodreads. So maybe I wasn't watching the right videos. Maybe I'm remembering wrong. I don't know. Uh, it calls the three girls misfits. One is from a conservative Mexican immigrant family. Someone obsessed with marine biology in Star Trek. Gang rape is apparently the topic of this book. So from my understanding of it, I'm going to put it higher on the scale, closer to that 10, because I, I personally find gang rape harder to read about than just one-on-one. -on -one. Like the concept of it's not just one person, but this whole group and and the psychology behind group think it's interesting but also i think it's way harder to read than other sexual assault narratives that you might read rules for being a girl i am automatically apprehensive about this one because it's written by candace bushnell and i read sex in the city the book that the show is based off of and it is Still to this day, one of the worst things that I have ever read. I have no idea how they got from point A to point B. And because of that, I don't really want to read this book because I just don't like Candace Bushnell. But I'm also basing that off of one single book that I read by her. And I probably shouldn't, especially since it was supposed to be a series of columns rather than like one cohesive narrative. Looks like our main character here is a star student, editor of the school paper, dreams of getting into Brown University, bright future. All right, teacher student. Her young, charismatic English teacher, Mr. Beckett, is always quick to admire her writing and talk books with her. So this sounds kind of in the same vein of My Dark Vanessa. The way the premise is set up, I feel like we're gonna see more like grooming behavior. Um, oh, and at the end of this, it says, Marin isn't about to back down. She uses the school newspaper to fight back and starts a feminist book club at school. That is my kind of girl. All right. Getting a little more hope for this book now. Then we have Exit, Pursued by a Bear by E.K. Johnston. Uh, Hermione Winters has been a flyer. She's been captain of her cheerleading team, the envied girlfriend and the undisputed queen of her school. Getting a lot of popular girl narratives in here, I think. It's her last year. Those days of labels are fading fast. She thinks she's ready for whatever comes next. Takes a drink at a party, becomes victim, survivor, and that raped girl. That's kind of tough to read. That, that label of that raped girl. But I'm sure that several people have dealt with that in school. Having a label like that. I almost, I don't know what's worse. That raped girl or slut. Like, they're both, oof. That's, that's a conversation to have. What label do you think is the worst? And it looks like this story focuses on transcendent friendship in the face of trauma. That really makes me want to pick this up. That's another thing that I don't necessarily see a lot of in sexual assault books. Like there's, I guess I do. There's always the friend, but they're like on the edge of do I believe this or do I not? Or I believe this and I think this and this and this should happen and not really letting the person fight with you if that makes any sense I, anyway I'm interested in the transcendent friendship part of this asking for it by Louise O'Neill I have so many I, I'm ashamed of this one I have so many Louise O'Neill books on my Goodreads TBR and I haven't read a single one and they've been sitting on my to be read shelf for actual years, like at least three plus years. And I haven't read a single one yet. Um, she does 
tend to be more YA. I believe she has also written some adult books. Uh, she's an Irish author, which already makes me feel good because not only does she write about topics that I'm interested in, but she's an Irish author and I've had very good luck with Irish authors. They tend to be books that I just love. So this is about small town Ireland. Again, interested because small town narratives just tend to be my books. She's beautiful, happy, confident. There's a party and stuff happens. We're, we're getting so many party narratives in these recommendations. Interesting. What do these party book narratives tell us about book Twitter? All right, Bastard Out of Carolina by Dorothy Allison. This one, I'm so interested in. I'm just gonna read the premise as it says it. Greenville County, South Carolina, is a wild, lush place that is home to the Boatwright family, a tight-knit clan of rough-hewn, hard-drinking men who shoot up each other's trucks and indomitable women who get married young and age too quickly. At the heart of this story is Ruth Ann Boatwright, known simply as Bone, a bastard child who observes the world around her with a mercilessly keen perspective. When her stepfather, Daddy Glenn, cold as death, mean as a snake, comes incre becomes increasingly more vicious toward her, Bone finds herself caught in a family triangle that tests the loyalty of her mother, Annie, and leads to a final harrowing encounter from which there can be no turning back. I wanna pick this up immediately. Again, it's kind of got that small town, strong family vibe. Sorry, memory card was full. By strong, I mean like tough, not like close knit. I just immediately want to pick this book up. I will probably try to read it this month or next month because I just, oof, that premise gets me. Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno, Georgina Fernwe waits with growing impatience for the tingle of magic in her fingers, magic that has been passed down through every woman in her family. Her twin sister, Mary, already shows an ability to defy gravity, but with their 18th birthday looming at the end of this summer, Georgina fears her gift will never come. Summer is supposed to become legend, there's some mysterious bird, the women are cast into suspicion, Interesting. Women are always cast into suspicion, no matter what they do. Ah, looks like I missed a nonfiction from my last video that was talking about nonfiction. This is Chasing Cosby, The Downfall of America's Dad. I tried to mark all of the nonfiction on my list. I missed some stuff. I'm forgetful. I think we've already clarified that. So we all know the story of Bill Cosby and how he has fallen very, very, very far. Um, this, I don't know that this is from any of the, um, victims themselves. No, this is from a People Magazine journalist, former People Magazine journalist. And it basically details the whole Cosby incident. So, I don't know. I'm still feeling a lot of pain from that. I don't know that I'll pick that one up because I'm just like... Why? Cosby? You were America's dad. Why? Why? Why you do this? The music of what happens. This has something else interesting come up. From what I remember of me and the books that I've read on sexual assault, I think this is the first book addressing sexuality that I've read concerning sexual assault. Um, we have a boy who is gay, into video games and sports, um, not a big deal to his friends and family. He does have a secret, which is an encounter with an older kid that he tries not to think about. Um, someone else who's never been kissed and is searching for Mr. Right. 1980s era food truck. 1980s era? food truck, add in prickly pears, cloud eggs, and a murky idea of what's considered locally sourced and organic. This sounds pretty fun. 
again, like, it's sexual assault. I'm not saying sexual assault is fun or good in any way, but as far as books to ease you into the genre and books on sexual assault that are lighter reads, this sounds like it would be there. So it sounds like it would be more a one or a two on this scale. Um, and I'm wondering what kind of book it is, because when I look at this cover, I think graphic novel rather than like wordy book. So I'd be interested to see how it's written out. Bad Romance. I feel like I've seen this book before because the cover is really, really eye-catching. This whole dead flowers in a frame thing. It's like they took a popular Instagram photo or something of a framed object and just killed it and put it on the cover. And I really, I really love that. Um, we have a girl with what looks like a violent stepfather and a germaphobic mother. She wants out of all of this. She wants to be anything but scared and alone. Falls in love with a guy she thinks it's too good to be true and looks like it turns out to be too good to be true. I'm hoping the book is as good as the cover. Cause that cover. Then we have Faking Normal, which looks like it's part of a series. Again, young adult. A lot of these are young adult narratives, which I have mixed feelings on. Like, I'm glad that they're in young adult books because I tend to assume that a lot of young adults as well as adults read young adult books. So it's good that the topic's being explored, but it's also like, why is this happening to young people? This shouldn't have to be something that young people have to be super aware of, but it happens to them and that's sad and... Ugh, all these young adult books. It's kind of bringing me down, honestly. So, faking normal, something happened over the summer, she hasn't told anyone about it, she's shamed and embarrassed, hides in her closet and compulsively scratches the back of her neck, trying to make the outside hurt more than the inside does. So we have some self-harm in here, which is not something that I see a lot of in sexual assault books. I think that's just because, like, I'm sure it happens a lot to sexual assault victims um, taking part in self-harm, but I feel like it's one of those topics where authors are really afraid to go there uh, that can probably make their book significantly less marketable, because it is a really touchy, really triggering topic. So I'm guessing that's why I haven't really read a bunch about it. Then you have a quiet, awkward boy next door who has secrets of his own. They lean on each other for support. Cool, cool. And I believe this is the last book. People might have reached out to me and given me some other suggestions and I probably forgot to write them down. I Stop Somewhere by T.E. Carter. Ellie Frias disappeared long before she vanished. Good opening line. Good job, Goodreads. I'm hooked. Young adult book. Begins freshman year with a new look. She doesn't need to be popular. She just needs to blend in with the wallpaper. Unthinkable happens. Trapped after a brutal assault. Wasn't the first victim. And she watches it happen again and again. Something else that I don't see a ton of in the sexual assault books that I've read. The ones that I have read, it's typically one victim um, rather than a serial rapist. So interesting. I'm probably going to put that a little higher on the scale, more difficult to read. So I think I've made it through everything or most everything. I have probably forgotten stuff. I will probably do an updated video sometime in the future. I'm just glad to finally be through these because these take so long to do and I'm sure this video is going to take so long to edit. That said, I have gotten some amazing feedback. Thank you to everyone on Twitter who recommended a book. Thank you to everyone who reached out to me to confide in me about your personal stories. I am honored that you feel safe talking to me about that. And I hope you're all doing well. Everyone take care of yourselves when reading these books. I have read a lot of these books. Generally, I've read a lot of these books lately. I think I really need to start backing off soon and take part in my own self-care. So I love you all. Take care of yourselves, please.
because I love you and I want you, I want you to feel good about yourself and feel better and have a good day. Um, that is it from me. So please like, subscribe, be my friend on social media. My DMs are always open and I will see all of you in my next video. Bye friends.